my name is Beth, and I'm so excited to continue our series, Relationship Goals. Now today, I want to talk about something a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with, secrets. Now think about that feeling you get when your friend has a juicy secret to tell you. You can't wait to hear what they're about to say. Are they finally going to reveal who they like? Are they going to tell you something about your crush? Do they know something about someone else? Are they going to give you the answers you need to pass a test? There's so much anticipation, and you can't wait to find out what they're going to say. It's strange how excited we get when our friend is about to tell us something that nobody else knows and that we can't tell anyone else. But you know when secrets aren't as fun? When the secret is about us. When we have a secret about ourselves, we'll do anything to make sure that no one finds out. All of us are tempted to do things in secret. I will never forget a time in middle school when I had a secret I really wanted to keep from my parents. Now, you should know that my parents were pretty strict growing up. And when it came to dating, they wanted to be in the know about who I was talking to, and they had very specific rules around dating. I knew all the rules, but I didn't like them. So when it came time for our eighth grade dance, I knew my parents would have rules about who I could go with. So I decided that I would say I was going to the dance with my friends, but really I was meeting a boy. I knew it went against what my parents wanted, but I thought their rules were over the top and that meeting this boy wasn't hurting anyone, so it wasn't a big deal. And while I told myself it wasn't a big deal, I also wanted to make sure that my parents never found out. And maybe you've found yourself in a similar situation. It might be something similar that your parents have some rules around. Maybe you have a phone, but there are certain apps you're not supposed to have. But you don't think it's a big deal to have them, so you secretly have them on your phone, and you're just hoping your parents never find out. For others of you, maybe you found yourself drifting towards things on your phone that you shouldn't. Maybe it's pictures or texts you're sending that you hope never go public. Or maybe it's watching pornography on your phone or computer when no one is around and you're hoping that nobody finds out about it. And there are probably a lot of reasons why you're hiding these things and don't want anyone to find out. Maybe it feels like the only person it's affecting is you, so why bring anybody else into it? There's probably some fear that you'll be judged. Or maybe you feel a sense of embarrassment about the idea of ever having to let someone in. While it may feel like the things we're keeping secret aren't that big of a deal, if we're not careful, secrets can end up controlling our lives. The fear of someone finding out or being exposed in some way can so easily consume all of our thoughts. So today, I want us to look at a verse written by a guy named Paul. Paul is writing a letter to a group of people, and in this letter, he gives some really good advice on how we should live our lives. Listen to what he has to say in 1 Corinthians. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Now here, Paul is acknowledging that as humans, we do have the right to do anything. You can make any choice in life you want. You can do whatever you please, whenever you please. No one is stopping you. You have the right to live your life how you want to live your life. But then Paul adds, while you can do anything, not everything is beneficial. And what Paul means is that while we have the freedom to live our lives however we want, there are things that lead us towards the life God has for us, and there are things that will lead us away from the life that God has for us. And then Paul goes on to say that while you can do anything, you should not be mastered by anything. And when you are mastered by something, it is running your life. And Paul is letting us know that there are certain things that while we can choose to do them, we should know that they have the potential to control our lives. So while you can choose to do things in secret, we should know that things done in secret have the potential to master us. The habits, actions, and things that we tend to do in secret have the potential to control our lives in a way that they shouldn't. And if we're not careful, the temptation that we face will dictate the direction of our life but we don't have to be controlled by anything. 
We don't have to give in to secrets. We can remember that ultimately we belong to Jesus and he has a plan for our lives and he wants what's best for us. And what's best for us isn't to live in secrecy. Our secrets will cause us to live in fear. But when we bring things to the light, we can begin to experience so much freedom. And I told you earlier that I lied to my parents about going to the dance with my friends when really I was meeting a guy there. Well, my parents eventually found out what I had done. It didn't stay a secret for super long. And after they found out, we had a really long talk about it. And at first, I didn't understand why it was such a big deal. But now I get it. My parents understood what Paul was saying. They knew if I continued down the road of keeping my dating life a secret, it would have the potential to master me. They knew that bringing things to the light and talking about them would help me to live the type of life that God had for me. My parents helped me to understand that they weren't there to judge me, but to help me learn how to date in a healthy way. They helped me to set boundaries for what they should know about when it came to my dating life. And they helped me to figure out the types of boundaries I should have in future relationships. Bringing things to the light helped me to avoid the temptation of allowing anything in my life to master me. So the question for you is this, what in your life has the potential to master you? And whatever it is, would you be willing to bring it to the light? And if you're willing to bring it to the light, the best place to start is with your small group and small group leaders. That's a group of people who want you to experience freedom. And they're more than just a safe place to share. They're also a good group of people to help keep you accountable. We're going to be tempted to go back to the things we've done in secret. So we need people to help us break away from the things that have the potential to master us. Breaking away from those things may look like deleting some apps off your phone or deciding to not bring your phone into your bedroom at night. You may need to ask your parents to install some filters on your computer, or there may be some people you need to distance yourself from. There may be some text conversations you need to leave or people you need to stop DMing. Perhaps there is a conversation you need to tell your parents about because you no longer feel comfortable. Some of us need to delete some pictures we have on our phones and maybe walk away from a relationship altogether. It can be scary to let people in. And it can be difficult to place boundaries in our life to keep us accountable, but I want you to remember this. You have the right to do anything, but not everything is best for you. God has an amazing plan for your life, and you have to decide if you're going to make the choice to keep things a secret or if you're going to bring them to the light. Because it's true. Things done in secret have the power to master us. But when things are brought to the light, we have the potential to experience so much freedom. Now, as you head to group, I want you to be thinking about this. Name a secret that someone might justify by saying, yeah, but it doesn't hurt anyone, so it's okay. All right, Transit. Uh, at this time, sixth graders, you